So I'm going to be unboxing a new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is an H55 board, you can tell from the name. It is H55, that's a chipset, M, which is micro ATX. And normally they have UD something 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 after here. And this is, or S something, this is not that. They are just calling this out. What's special about this board is that it is USB 3. So you can see up here, it is also USB 3.0. That is like huge, it's like a quarter of the front of the box. So it has a three year warranty, and it includes, as you may or may not have guessed, USB 3.0, 10X super speed, also USB power 3X. Now this is a cool feature because this gives you three times the power that is spec'd for USB 3.0 through each port. So if you're running a hub, you can actually run three full power USB devices without using an external adapter. Very cool. It features Ultra Durable 3, which is normally a huge icon like or logo like this and isn't today. Smart 6, it supports Core i5, Core i3. It supports Core i7, LGA1156 chips too, but I think part of the reason they're not calling that out is because the Core i7 chips do not have onboard video unlike the Core i3s and the Core i5 dual cores, so you won't actually be able to take advantage of all of the features of this board, and you'd probably be better off with a P55 board if you are buying an i7. So here's our user's manual, which includes a motherboard utility and driver DVD. Don't use this, download the latest off the Gigabyte website. All right, then we've got a Dolby Home Theater sticker. Thank you. All right, then we've got our Smart6 user's manual. A bunch of different languages, cool. Oh, whoa, oh, I dropped it. No good. Okay, multilingual installation guidebook, so that'll show you how to install your CPU, how to install RAM, how to install the front panel connectors, bunch of different languages, thanks so much. IO Shield. So you can already see, compared to the other H55 boards from Gigabyte I've had a look at, there are a few more extras in the box, although not much. You've got two SATA cables, one of them is straight and one is right angle, and one IDE cable. For crying out loud, give us more SATA cables, don't bother giving us an IDE cable anymore. That said, this could be useful for a lot of people. I, you know what, I take that back. Because a lot of people running sort of like a micro ATX more value solution are probably reusing their old DVD drive, which is probably IDE. So I totally take that back. I can definitely see the justification. Okay, fine, I was wrong, Gigabyte was right. All right, let's have a look at the board itself. So we'll start with the general features. First of all, we have two PCI Express 16X connectors. This one is uh, 16X true because you can see all the little connectors inside. This one is an 8X connector, so you see all the little slots here, but it's only wired electrically for 4X. So even if this board does support Crossfire, which I'm not sure if it does, I, I can't actually tell. It doesn't even really matter. You wouldn't want to use this board for optimal Crossfire performance because this is a PCIe 4X slot. You're not going to get the best performance out of it. Your chipset's down here. You've got a couple of USB 2, or sorry, three USB 2.0 headers right here. And then you've got a wide variety of SATA slots. So do, 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 do. these are all SATA 2 and I believe these are SATA 2 as well. Yes they are. So these are off the Gigabyte SATA 2 chip which is also powering your IDE port and then these are off of the Intel chipset. Okay here's your front panel connectors. Like all P55 and H55 boards you've got support for dual channel DDR3. Here's your 24 pin power connector located in exactly its most convenient place along the right hand edge of the board. Here, here's your LGA1156 socket. Now Something to note about this is that it does support all LGA1156 CPUs, Core i3s, Core i5 dual cores, Core i5 quad cores, and Core i7s, but you will not be able to take advantage of the onboard graphics unless you're using a Core i3 or a Core i5 dual core which has onboard graphics on the CPU because this chipset does not have any onboard graphics built into it. So. Be cognizant of that. Okay, here's all of our power delivery circuitry up here. I wouldn't have minded seeing some cooling on it, but what are you gonna do? It's a pretty value-oriented board, and quite honestly, the kinds of chips you should be putting in a board like this do not suck a lot of power. You're not gonna make them all that hot. Up here is our eight-pin power, con uh, excuse me, CPU power connector, so that will deliver power to your CPU in its ideal location at the top left of the board. And then let's have a look at the connectivity we have at the back. So first of all, we have one of those great mouse keyboard PS2 com ports, I love these. Then we've got a couple USB ports. We have every onboard video solution you could possibly want, DVI, VGA, DisplayPort, and HDMI. We have an optical audio out. We have a couple more USB 2.0 ports. We've got a FireWire port, an eSATA port, and then we have two USB 3.0 ports. So only six USB ports on the back, but 
Two of them are USB 3.0, so, and they're all 3x power, so you could, I mean, you could be running a hub off each one of these without even worrying about overpowering them. So, I mean, you've got a lot of expansion options, really. Gigabit Ethernet and 7.1 audio. Thank you for checking out my unboxing.